Origin form Palkia, Origin form Dialga, Primal Kyogre, and Primal Groudon are returning to Pokemon Go along with a new kind of Pokeball, a new class of Pokemon, new Dynamax Pokemon, and Gigantamax Pokemon during an all new event called Pokemon Go Wild Area 2024 Global, which will be running Saturday, November 23rd to Sunday, November 24th. 10 a.m. to 6.15 p.m. both days. This event can be played for free, but there are features that are limited to those that buy tickets for the event. For that reason, I'll be dividing this event into two parts. The first part will cover what you can do for free, and the second part will cover what you'll be able to do if you decide to upgrade your experience with a paid ticket. In this video, I'll also be going over features and bonuses, wild Pokemon, raid bosses, and max battles. And I'll round out the video with some overall thoughts about the Wild Area event. To be clear, this video is only covering the global e version of the Wild Area event. Not to be confused with the in-person version of this event in Fukuoka, Japan, the weekend before the global event. Now with that said, let's talk about gameplay features that'll be free to all, whether you have a ticket or not. The Pokemon Go Wild Area Global event will be a brand new event focusing all on poison and electric type Pokemon, as well as three new features. First up, Mighty Pokemon. Mighty Pokemon are stronger Pokemon with higher attack, defense, and HP stats than regular Pokemon. Perhaps a greater chance at finding hundos. They are more likely to appear as XL or XXL Pokemon. They'll be more challenging to catch, and they also can be shiny. To help with catching these Mighty Pokemon, will be given Safari Balls, designed to increase your chances of catching Mighty Pokemon. All trainers will receive a timed research task during the event that awards a small number of Ghost Safari Balls when completed. You can also get more Ghost Safari Balls when spinning photo discs at Pokestops during the event. Be sure to use them because all unused Ghost Safari Balls will be disappearing from your item storage at 6.15 p.m. every day. And then there's the debut of Toxtricity. Toxtricity in both amped and low key forms will be making their Pokemon Go debut and six star max battle. Battles. While Toxicity will be appearing in 4 star raid battles and Dynamax Toxicity will be appearing in max battles. Pikachu Popstar and Pikachu Rockstar will be available by completing special research, collection challenges, or by taking ghost snapshots and they can be shiny. Snorlax wearing a studded jacket will be debuting, also with a chance to be shiny. The Wild Area event will be featuring rotating habitat hours. During the electric hour habitat you can encounter Alolan Geodude, Shinx, Magnemite, Voltorb, Hisuian Voltorb, Electabuzz, Electrike, Blitzel, Joltik, Tynamo, Stunfisk, and Helioptile. During the Poison Hour habitat, you can encounter Bulbasaur, Bellsprout, Tentacool, Spinarak, Haldane Wooper, Quillfish, Hisuian Quillfish, Skaroopy, Krogunk, Venipede, Skrulp, and Marini. Mighty Pokemon you can only encounter on Saturday will be Pidgeot, Golem, Gyarados, Luxray, Scolipede, Galvantula, Tyrantrum, and Toxapex. And on Sunday, you'll be able to find Venusaur, Poliwrath, Dragonite, Feraligator, Electivire, Mamoswine, Electros, and Dragalge. Raiding will be an important part of the Wild Area event. In three star raids on Saturday, you'll be able to encounter Snorlax wearing a studded jacket, Luxray, and Scolipede. While on Sunday, you'll be able to encounter Snorlax wearing a studded jacket, Venusaur, and Electivire. In four star raids every day will be Toxtricity, both Amped form and low key form. And in five star raids, we'll have Origin form Dialga and Origin form Palkia. There's a chance you'll be able to catch an Origin form Dialga that knows the Adventure Effect Charge Move, Roar of Time, and Origin form Palkia that will know its Adventure Effect Charge Move, Spatial Rend. Roar of Time pauses the timers of consumable items like incense, daily adventure incense, lucky eggs, and star pieces, while Spatial Rend allows for you to encounter wild Pokemon from a greater distance. As mentioned earlier, Primal Kyogre and Primal Groudon will be in Primal Raids. And we can't forget about max battles featuring Dynamax Toxtricity, both amped and low key forms, as well as Dynamax Drillbur and Dynamax Excadrill. Certain Pokemon caught or evolved during the event will be able to know featured attacks. Venusaur will be able to know Frenzy Plant. Pidgeot will be able to know Gust. Poliwrath will be able to know Counter. Gyarados will be able to know Aqua Tail. Feraligator will be able to know Hydro Cannon. And Luxray will be able to know Psychic Fangs. Bonuses that all trainers will receive will include no remote raid limit from Friday, November 22nd to Sunday, November 24th, a 1600 daily max particle collection limit, two hour lure modules, a chance to catch Pokemon with a special background after after winning max battles against Toxtricity or winning 4 star, 5 star, and primal raids. Field research themed around different Pokemon habitats and one ghost snapshot surprise event encounter per day. For you avatar item aficionados out there, for the first time ever in Pokemon Go, trainers will be able to purchase new hairstyles for their avatar, along with Team Yell top, crop top, pants, skirt, gloves, and shoes. And we also now know what the official Pokemon Go Wild Area t-shirt will look like, as well as the 
event stickers. Trainers that explore routes during Pokemon Go Wild Area Global will encounter Pokemon more frequently and will earn additional buddy candy. There will be new party challenges exclusive to Pokemon Go Wild Area Global for those that utilize party play. Party up and earn encounters with electric or poison type Pokemon. That last one was listed in the free to play section of the information for the event, but yet it said that it was exclusive to ticket holders. So we'll have to see how that one plays out. But perhaps if you find somebody who has a ticket that hosts a party play lobby, perhaps those that don't have a ticket can participate in it and then benefit from the exclusive uh, encounters and rewards that that pay trainer may have the benefit of. Okay, so that was a lot of information, so take a second and breathe and let that sink in. And let's talk about the exclusive benefits and features for those that will be buying the paid event tickets. The paid event tickets are $11.99 USD and will be giving you access to the following benefits and features. Ticket holders will have access to an exclusive special research story where you can select between an electric or poison focused path and become an expert trainer of your chosen type. Your decision will affect your special research story and some post event bonuses. The electric path will have encounters with Pikachu Popstar, Dynamax Toxicity Amped Form, and you will get an electric expert medal upon special research completion. Whereas the Poison Path will have encounters with Pikachu Rockstar, Dynamax Toxicity Low Key Form, and you will get a Poison Pro Medal upon special research completion. If you complete the special research story from Monday, November 25th to Friday, November 29th, you'll get the special bonuses of daily timed research focus on either electric or poison type Pokemon, which rewards include a lucky egg, stardust, and rare candy, double the damage for electric or poison type attacks used in raids, gym battles, and max battles, and Team Go Rocket Balloons will be appearing more often. Go Wild Area 2024 Pose, reward for completing the special research story, one timed research task each hour awarding Go Safari Balls, increased max particles from power spots and exploration, a 30 3200 max particle daily limit, an increased chance to encounter shiny Pokemon, encounters with Pikachu Popstar and Pikachu Rockstar by completing themed collection challenges, double hatch candy, half hatch distance for eggs, double hatch stardust, double hatch XP, double hatch candy, up to five raid passes per day from photo discs at gyms, 5,000 additional XP for completed raids, one additional candy XL for Pokemon in four star, five star, mega raids, Ultra Beast raids and Primal raids, up to six special trades per day, reduced Stardust cost for trades, and three Ghost Snapshot Surprise event encounters per day. I posted a shorter version of this video in two parts on TikTok and Instagram, and there were a lot of these same questions being asked over and over again in the comments, and I had them listed here as frequently asked questions, and maybe some of you may have the same questions as well, so I'm gonna go over these really quick. For example, are Primal raids remote raidable? Well, the answer is yes. They've always been remote raidable, However, do keep in mind that there are some raids and battles that are not remote raidable and you have to do them in person. These battles, or raids I should say, are in person only. You cannot remote raid into them and you can't invite anyone to do the raids. You have to be there in person. And the same goes for max battles. Max battles are in person only. There is no remote raid feature built into that system at all. All battles, Dynamax battles, Gigantamax battles, all of those have to be done in person. The next one is, do you need a ticket for Primal Raids? There has never been a time really where you actually ever needed a ticket for Primal Raids, to my knowledge. The first time Primal Raids were introduced were at Pokemon Go Toro Hoenn in Las Vegas, but they were not locked behind any tickets. Next up is, will you be able to get both Pikachu Popstar and Pikachu Rockstar without a ticket? The answer is yes. You can encounter both of these special Pikachu through special research, which is exclusive to the paid ticket experience. So you will have to spend the $11.99 USD in order to be able to do the special research branching story thing that we discussed earlier. I don't believe there'll be any free research, special research I should say, uh, for the free to play players that will not be buying a ticket. You can also count these Pikachu through the collection challenges and through AR snapshots. Now keep in mind, if you're playing this event for free, you can only do one AR snapshot per day of the event. If you were to buy the ticket, you could do three of those snapshots per day of the event. And you do have a chance to encounter those Pikachu that way. And the last thing that was commonly asked of me was, what do you mean by no limit for remote raids? There was some confusion as to the terminology or the wording of there not being a remote raid limit. Some people like to say unlimited remote raids. Some people like to say no limit on the remote raids. So basically what that means is 
there is no five remote raid limit per day that we normally have on remote raids during the event window. As a matter of fact, the information says from the 22nd of November to the 24th, you'll be able to do what's called unlimited remote raids. So to make it simple, unlimited remote raids, you'll still have to buy all the raid passes you'll want to use in order to do all the raiding you want to do. Though, after saying all of that, it sort of sounds like I should be doing a tips video for the Wild Air event. Let me know in the comments if you'd like that. Look, I'm not gonna kid you. There is a lot packed into this event. I'm, I'm not exaggerating. It seems to be a lot of raid and max battle focus included in this event. I know that there's an overall poison type and electric type theme going on here, but it just really seems so battle focused, you know? As a long time player, and I mean since 2016 long time player with this game, when I look at this event, I kind of narrow what my focus would be for me personally down to a few things. One being Mighty Pokemon. That's brand new. They're going to be featured in the wild and they do have a chance to be shiny. And then some of them, I believe, also align with being able to have their exclusive moves as well as we just went over. And yes, I know there's like a lot of wild Pokemon being featured as well. A lot of them have been featured in previous events like Pokemon Go Fest, maybe even Community Day. So they're not really too special. However, I do understand and recognize that a lot of you guys out there may be looking forward to getting shinies of those. And you know what? Go for those. Basically, take a look at the information given to you. Identify which ones you need shinies of or maybe good IVs or hundos, whatever your goal is, and then focus on those as well. After that, there's gonna be raids. Someone said in my comments that they had one raid pass and they asked what should I use it on? So out of all the raids, I'd limit it to the origin form Pokemon. So that's origin form Palkia and origin form Dialga. They both have what's called adventure effect moves. We've talked about it earlier in the video. And essentially one allows Pokemon to spawn further away from you with the increased spawn radius. And the other one freezes your timers like with your daily adventure incense, your lucky eggs and your star pieces and allows you to use them for a longer amount of time. Personally, I would recommend if you're doing something like that to go for origin form Dialga to be able to take advantage of that time being frozen on those timers. And then after that origin form Palkia on being able to expand your spawn radius for Pokemon around you. And don't get me wrong, the problem Pokemon are pretty cool, but they've been around a bit longer and appear a little bit more frequently than Orger Form Palkia and Orger Form Dialga. But if you don't have them in the inventory, I would recommend doing at least a few of each of them and then taking the better of the IVs from either one and probably leveling them up a little bit to maybe level 40 to be able to utilize them in future raid battles. And in case you didn't know, Primal Groudon boosts grass, fire, and ground type attacks, while Primal Kyogre boosts water, electric, and bug type attacks, all in raid battles. And on top of that, their signature moves, Precipice Blaze for Primal Groudon, and Origin Pulse for Primal Kyogre, are pretty hard hitting and are very useful in raids. And we can't forget the debut of Toxtricity. This is the first event it'll be featured in. And we're getting the base forms, the Dynamax forms, and the Gigantamax form all in the same event. That's pretty huge. Of course, you'll need to arrange those battles and raids in person. So I would highly recommend utilizing Campfire to be able to look up local communities meeting up and gathering around you for this event and see if you can link up with them and do these raids and battles together and get your share of the spoil. Hopefully you'll get uh, shinies out of them, who knows. Oh, and let's not forget, Toxel, the pre-evolution of Toxtricity will be featured in 10 kilometer eggs. So that means there's incubators to get on top of everything else happening. There's a lot happening with this event. I hope you all are able to partake in some way, shape or form and I hope you guys have a lot of fun with it. Let me know what your thoughts are about the event in the comments below. Let me know if I missed anything and be sure to like the video and subscribe and thanks for watching. See you guys next time.